y'all welcome back and if you're new welcome thanks so much for stopping by i really appreciate you so today we're gonna do a library haul so let's see what i checked out what my thoughts are so i can go and return these because two of them are late because i misread the um return slip i thought it said a different date than what it did but apparently i can't read half the time um so the first one i got was the good sister by sally hepworth i thoroughly enjoyed this one um this is about twin sisters fern and rose and they did not have as you're reading it you find out about their childhood and how they didn't have a good childhood and all this stuff and rose typically takes up for fern fern is very sensitive to sounds lights routines those types of things and it's it's kind of i don't know i don't remember if they say it or not but like she's definitely on the spectrum of autism because it just feels that way i have a cousin and they share some similarities um because he has um asperger's and i find that the female fern they share some some of the same issues when it comes to crowds and people and sounds and lights and things like that so she is um fern is looking a way to basically pay back her sister in a good way um for all the help that she's given her over the years um and she lives fern lives a very structured life and routines is key in her in her existence um but she decides she wants to give her sister a baby her sister is having infer in, you know infertility issues or whatever so she decides like hey i could give my sister a baby and it'll kind of make up for everything um that she's helped me with over the years so we go through the journey of Fern trying to figure out like how is she going to go about this? Obviously she needs a father for the kid and how do you exactly ask someone, hey, can you get me pregnant so I can give the baby to my sister? So we get to see her meet a guy and um, he has some of the same qualities. They're both kind of on the spectrum but not like like so drastic that they can't live, you know, a normal leading life because there's different ends of the spectrum. Um, so we see this process and we see her go through everything to basically make a better life for her sister. But there are so many things in this book that if you don't read them slowly or just remember them and then later on whenever the twists start happening, those things kind of click back and you're like whoa like one of the one of the female one of the twins um it definitely has a different perspective on things so um you have to differentiate that but i thought this one was really good and um uh, like the front of the book says everyone has a dark side and yes they do proof in this book so if you like to read books about sisters, especially twins, and then put a twisty thriller into it, this is the way to go. Second book is People Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Now, this one took me a while to get to. I know it's been out for quite some time now. Um, I think it came out in 2021. Yes. So, it's still kind of new, just not like 2022 new. Um, and this one is about Poppy and Alex. Poppy and Alex meet at um, orientation. She winds up speaking to him. And they are complete opposites. But come to find out, they both live near each other. So whenever a friend of hers was like, Hey, um, there's somebody that you can carpool back with. She didn't realize it was him. So she wound up carpooling home with him for whatever holiday it was maybe christmas or something. i don't remember the exact holiday so she car pulls back and again they have nothing in common they go through tons of things and um they decide after you know they did the trip and all this and and they, they decide that they're gonna go on vacation together every 
year. So for 10 years, they have gone on a summer vacation and up until two years prior, um, everything was fine. But apparently that last vacation they went on, something happened that ruined um, their relationship. They haven't spoken for quite some time and she's been in a rut. She works for a uh, travel company. Basically, they pay for them to go travel to make reviews so that people will go and travel to those locations through them. And he is a high school teacher. And, <clears throat> excuse me, so she's out of, out of the blue, off on a whim. She asked him if you want to go on vacation with me. And come to find out, um, yes, he would like to go on vacation with her. But it's not just any vacation. Um, this is her chance to, she feels, fix things between the two of them. So, and normally whenever they would go on vacation... Like once she had gotten her new job, the new job would pay for them to, you know, go on this luxurious vacation. But the way they used to do it when they would go on vacations, they would literally do it the cheapest way they could because they were broke. Like dead ass broke. So she decided that, you know, she brought it up and she wasn't able to do it through the company. So she decided they're going to do it the old way. So she doesn't really tell him too much about this. And they, she goes and books the, you know, the Airbnb, a car, like all these different things. And it is like some of the worst conditions in my opinion. Um, but she has, she's trying to find a way to get their relationship back on track because she really misses talking to him because like I said, there's been no contact for a while. So they go and of course, you know, with every romance that's happens you always have that really big big fallout so we get to see this and see what happened prior to make them not go on vacation together and just <clears throat> when the the big moment comes it's like huge um absolutely love this i didn't think i would when i first started listening to it i, I felt like um because i read it you know i listened to it as i flipped through the book and read with it um, and in the beginning, I was like, mm, I don't know. Like, it had just enough intrigue for me to stay with it, but I could have put it down. But I was like, no, no, no. A lot of people like this one. You'll probably like it too. And I did. I absolutely enjoyed this one. Um, so if you want like a fun, cute little quick read, because I found it was a very quick read, even though it does look a little thick, but I find it just. You, you're addicted to it. You want to keep flipping those pages. So this one is definitely one to check out. Okay, the third book. This one I feel like I relate to in, on so many levels. It is unreal. Um, this one is Curvy Girls Can't Date Quarterbacks. This is part of the Curvy Girl Club. This is book one. And this is by Kelsey Stelting. Stelting, I think is how you say it. And this one, like I said, it hits on so many levels. This one is about Rory, and Rory is a curvy girl. You know, she's a little bit bigger than most of the people she, her friends and stuff. And her mom is constantly on her about um, dieting and exercise. She even gave her a pregnancy test, and she's like, like, I know I'm gaining weight, I'm getting bigger, but like, I'm a virgin. I didn't, like, why are you giving me a pregnancy test? And her mom is just like, never ending and it's so annoying and like I feel for her but like at the end obviously I get it but in the beginning you just want to punch the mom in the face she's a health teacher so it makes it even worse so anyway she winds up setting up this doctor's appointment for her kid and she goes to the doctor and what do they tell her she has PCOS if you don't know what that is it is polycystic ovary syndrome I believe is how you say it I was diagnosed with this this as well and it is a it is hard to get pregnant it's hard to lose weight it's hard when it's the monthly time it's it's just hard and so she is diagnosed with this well lo and behold when she gets to school goes to her mom's class because her mom is a teacher they are talking about this PCOS that is the lesson in health that day so um obviously when mom's in the room 
nobody talks smack. But when mama leaves the room, everybody's got an opinion. So the popular girl, um, Merit, she, she's always talking about people and especially like larger people and just in general head cheerleader type deal. And she used to date the um, quarterback. <clears throat> so that day when Merritt started on her crap, um, Rory just, she couldn't take it. She basically told her off. And by the end of the class period, we were looking at a bet that Rory could get, like she said, I can get anybody to, you know, like me or whatever. So Merritt bet her that she couldn't get the quarterback, which was her ex, to go to prom or homecoming, homecoming, to go to homecoming with her. And she was like, yes, I can. She took the bet. There was only so many weeks or whatever, uh, two months, two months, she had to uh, get Beckett, the football um, quarterback, to fall in love with her. So, uh, obviously, she has to do this. And what happens is she, there's three other girls. I think they're all in the same class with her. And they're all on the larger side. And they feel like it's their civic duty to get with Rory and just make her the best version of herself. To help her win this guy. To basically, um, one, hoorah for the fat girls or curvy girls. And so they befriend her and, you know, they get her all pumped up for this. And she has to go find, they have to find ways for her to run into Beckett. And when she does, she finds that she's, she's always had a crush on him, but she finds that she likes him a whole lot more. And little does she know, he likes her too. But in the back of her mind, she knows eventually she's going to have to tell him about this bet. And what happens in every love story, whether we've watched it in a movie or read it in a book, when you're like, hey, this was all a bet, but, but, but I do have feelings for you. The person's going to be like, oh my God, this whole relationship was a bet to you? What the hell? But that's exactly what happens. And she has to um, basically win him over. And shout out to the curvy girls in this book they did the damn thing. Um, I really enjoyed it. Will I read any more of this series? I don't know because I feel like all of them are kind of going to be like, um, maybe a rinse and repeat because it's all about curvy girls and they're all going to want, you know, the hot guy. Oh, he doesn't like me. But then the hot guy winds up liking you. So I feel like it might be a rinse and repeat situation. I'm not saying it is. I just feel like it personally. Sometimes with these series, especially the ones that have names like Curvy Girl, um, they all kind of eventually, it's the same story, but like different characters and maybe a different solution to the problem. So that, I don't know. Like I said, I won't, I don't know if I'll continue it, but I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was really cute, really sweet. So if, a little pick me up maybe you're a curvy girl yourself and you're just not feeling it go ahead and read this book like i said they had a couple of moments where it laugh out loud little sweet things and just it was great to see if they could win one over on the popular girls so worth a read book number four um this one i started last night and finished it today if i wouldn't have had to go to bed I maybe wouldn't have, um, you know, I'd have finished it all in one sitting. This one is called When I Was You by Amber Garza. Holy shit. So, um, this is about Kelly Medina. She is married to a man named Raphael, and they have a son named Aaron. Well, Aaron is in college, and Kelly gets a phone call from an unknown and she's not only never answers it but she decided to answer it and it is the pediatric clinic calling to confirm her appointment for um friday at 10 o'clock a new baby new appoint new patient well checkup so 
She tells the receptionist, like, whoa, you're like 19 years too late. Like, what are you talking about? And she, the lady freaks out on the phone. She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And um, she's like, y'all have the same name. Somehow or another, your numbers got mixed up in the system. Um, I apologize, blah, blah, blah. So Kelly goes throughout the day and she's like, so there's somebody in this area with my same name, first and last, the exact same name. Like, what are the quinky dinks? So she feels like she needs to find out who this woman is. But there's some things that have happened over the past however many months where she's not quite herself. Um, she's seeing a psychiatrist. Her best friend and her husband both are very... Um, when she tells them something, they both question, question, question. Because they remember, like, things that she has done and things she's... She might be hallucinating and things like that. So, they're both, like, very skeptical. And she's like, no, I'm serious. This is a person. And she decides she needs to know who this person is. So, she figures out who she is and befriends her. And their relationship there kind of starts to build and it gets crazy like at one point you don't even really there was times where i really didn't even know who was talking which kelly was talking because obviously they're both named kelly and i find it's more of a and i saw you and you walked in so would that be second person narrative I think it would be the whole book's told like that so it, it gives you that extra creepy factor when you don't know who the hell is talking but this one was really interesting especially when everything started to turn for the worst um, definitely gripping like I said I wanted to finish it all in one sitting but I had to go to bed because you know the Easter Bunny came uh, so we had to let him in the house but it says this part right here their unlikely friendship brings kelly a renewed sense of purpose taking care of this young woman and her adorable baby so baby boy at that so she she her therapist told her she needs to find a purpose so this is like her new purpose and then it says but that friendship quickly turns to an obsession and when one kelly disappears well the other one may know why so you're watching their relationship and her take, helping this lady take care of her baby. And, you know, she's really starting to get that bond. And then stuff starts just hitting the fan. And the twist after twist after twist start rolling in. And that ending. Whoo, I kind of didn't see the actual, like, ending, ending. Like, end. But... That worked out. <laughs> so, definitely gripping. Definitely something that kept me stuck on it. And I, I want to look up and see if Amber Garza has any other books. Because if her, I liked her writing style. Very easy to read. She wasn't trying to, you know, use huge words where you had to look it up every five seconds. Um, just... It flowed very well, very well storytelling. Like, she did a great job. A lot better than what I'm trying to do right now. Um, so, yeah. If you like a good thriller and the fact that these two women have the same name and you have to try to differentiate who they are in the book and what their relationship is, this one, this one, do not hesitate. So, those are what I got from the library. Tomorrow, I'm going to go and return those and possibly... Get a few more to see um, what else I can read. I try to utilize my library very often because it's a lot cheaper than buying books. But if I do want to purchase a book, I don't kick myself for it. It is what it is. And a lot of my books I do with Second and Charles where I get store credit and then I can find a used copy. And it's basically, you know, just recycling the money back into second charles as we go because every time i go i bring a little bag to sell back to them and i leave with books in hand so it's a nice even trade for me 
All right, so I hope everyone had a wonderful Easter. Today was Easter, today is Easter Sunday. Um, if you're not watching it on Easter Sunday, I hope you had a wonderful day on Sunday and had great family time. Hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you all next time. Bye guys.